welcome back. While these elections will see the citizens of the city demand answers and quick redressal of issues like unrepaired roads and open deathbeds masked as stormwater drains, one family in Chennai is bearing the brunt of one such unfortunate incident involving one such drain. Over to a campaign that seeks justice for a little boy. This is NDTV Hindu's Safe Baby Ganesh Drive. It was in January last year when four and a half year old Ganesh fell into a 20 feet deep uncovered stormwater drain. The little boy, though he survived the fall, has been in a coma for an entire year and has only recovered partially. Ganesh's fight for survival today continues with frequent physiotherapy sessions, but ever since, his parents can barely make ends meet. It will help if the authorities rise to help with aid. That would be sufficient. If you feel moved by this story and would like to help, you can contribute or get in touch with us here in NDTV Hindu. Write to us at feedback at ndtvhindu.com. In fact, since hearing the plight of this little child, many viewers have been calling in and reaching out via email to lend support to Ganesha's PD recovery. Some viewers have written in expressing their interest to meet with the parents of baby Ganesh personally, while others have offered monetary contribution. NDTV Hindu has been able to route a number of good Samaritans to Ganesha's parents. Those who have appro approached the family include Mr. M. Chandrasekhar, N. Sundar, Kishore, P. Krishnamurthy, Madhavan, Vishwanathan, Balaji, V. K. S. Krishnamurthy, Rati, Arvind Vinayagam, V. Chandran, Yuvaraj, Ganesh Kumar, R. Kumaran, S. Chalavadi, Prasad, Anu, N. S. M. Kumar, Meenakshi Priya, Muthu Kumar and Arvind. So once again, if you would like to extend help, please do. Our lines are always open. You can also write in to us at feedback at ndtv-hindu.com. Meanwhile, the former Karnataka Chief Minister B.S. Yadurappa is back in jail. The hospital where he was admit admitted yesterday discharged him this morning. Last night after meeting him, a senior BJP leader said Yadurappa wants to return to jail as he is very frustrated by media reports that he is faking his illness in order to avoid jail. Yadurappa, who now seems to have fallen out of favour with the central leadership, his, plea, his bail plea comes up for hearing tomorrow in the Karnataka High Court. Meanwhile, the Congress hit out at him saying he feigned his illness to stay out of jail. Today, a distinction without a difference is made. A difference without a distinction is made. That we believe in the rule of law, the law should go on, but we support him. And the support him means that the entire cabinet stands in one line to receive him in the jail. He is able to scold the prison's minister in case the facilities are not up to the mark. He embarks for a jail yatra by going from one hospital to another. And it is believed that the police in that state will conduct their investigation, prosecution, proceedings and so will the jail authorities without fear or favour as they would for a common man. Certainly only people with great good fortune can have such five-star jail yatras or five-star rath yatras. Amidst all this, the Maoists have rejected West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee's seven-day deadline to lay down arms and comfort talks by announcing a bandh on Saturday in three districts, the day on which the deadline ends. In a pamphlet distributed by Maoists in the stronghold of Jungle Mahal, they have hit out at Mamata saying she has insulted them by calling them supari killers. The letter terms Mamata's aggressive stance as that of similar to Ma Kali. Pakistan's Army Chief General Ashfaq Parvez Gayani has warned US against any unilateral strike inside Pakistan, briefing the members of the Pakistan Parliament's standing committees on defense. General Gayani said, US will think 10 times before taking unilateral action in Waziristan. Pakistan, a nuclear power, must not be compared with Iraq and Afghanistan. Pakistani Army Chief Gayani also dared the Obama administration at the same briefing, saying, does not need U.S. financial aid anymore. Gayani said, the problem lies in Afghanistan and not Waziristan. 
It is for Pakistan to decide if at all it will attack Waziristan. Blame the inter-service intelligence. All spy agencies, including the American CIA, has links with militant groups. Questioning the auditor's jurisdiction to review policy matters, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh had recently advised the Comptroller and Auditor General to limit its office to the role defined and had reminded it that never in the past had the CAG decided to comment on a policy issue. Today, responding to questions, Pranab Mukherjee seemed to back the government auditor, saying he has not exceeded jurisdiction. I do not think, I am making it quite clear, I do not think that CAG is exceeding its jurisdictions or things like that because basic responsibility of Comptroller and Auditor General is to identify if there be any lapse. Out of 100, if in 98 cases government has done the correct thing, they will ignore it. They will just pick up only those two things where some irregularities have taken place. It was addressed that the NCP chief and UPA ally, Sharad Pawar, has spoken out against the government. Pawar said there was a loss of public opinion due to this 2G scam and the public questioned why the Prime Minister was not intervening. UPA too started with controversy surrounding decisions taken earlier. Pawar was speaking at the idea exchange organized by Lok Sattha. After Pawar's criticism of the government, BJP said now even senior ministers are acknowledging that the faith of the people has been eroded. NCP ke neta Sharad Pawar ne kal kuch mahatvapun tipniya ki hai ek aise platform par jo rajnitik nahi tha. And Mr. Sharad Pawar has acknowledged that the government besieged with series of scandals, it has suffered loss of public opinion, which has completely eroded the authority of the UPA. The sense of an ending book has a new beginning. More on that when we return.